All right, children, the time now is 12 p.m. The time now is 12 p.m. Uh, we are here doing the P5 uh, Math Mod 1, Paper 1. All right, I want to try to, I will finish the entire Paper 1 today. All right, I will finish the entire Paper 1 today. And if got time, I will want to go into the Paper 2 a little bit. Some students ask, hey, Chia, where do you get all this uh, mock paper? Actually, you can get it from our website. All right, so just to let you know where you can get it from. Uh, the first place you can get it from is you can click on the live classes here. All right, go to, you, I mean, you have to log in first. Nah. After you log in, you can go to this page. How do you get to this page? You can actually press on this icon, 88 Tuition. You click on the live classes. All right, and down here, you see the class prerequisite? Yeah, just click on the class prerequisite and you can see the PDF. All right, this is called the PDF. All right, you can actually print this out. So these are the questions that we are going to do today. Is that okay? Okay, so this is uh, one place to get the question, the class prerequisite. Then some of the P6 will be asking, hey, Chia, how come only got P5 mock papers? Uh, don't have the P6 mock paper. So unfair. Okay, don't be upset, right? Don't be upset. All right, so for P6, right, you can actually go into your dashboard. All right, so not loading. Oh no, this is so embarrassing. Ah. Uh. Okay, maybe I'm clicking too much. Ah, okay, let's go into the dashboard. For P6, you can go into your dashboard. All right. So under your dashboard, right, under P6 down here. Where's my P6? Okay, this is P6. All right. You can actually click on something called topic map. For the P5, you also can do this. All right, P5, go to your P5, click on the topic map. Click on the mock papers. All right, by now, you should know where to get them ready. All right, for me, I have everything, right, because I teach from primary three all the way to sec four. All right, so for P5, you can actually click on here, see? P5 final mock one paper one and you can click on the start button all right then you'll be able to attempt those questions that what am i doing today you see it's the exact same question as what i was doing today can so this for the p5 uh, this is for the p5 all right for the p6 right for the p6 also got all right don't panic p6 also got ne? wait lah, i find first p6 where's my p6 uh, uh, psle mock one paper one yeah you can start on this paper can you can go here and do all right but for the p6 there's only mock one paper uh, there's only mock one paper one and paper two can okay for you to try uh but there's another group of paid customer the psle book camp one they got three papers i uh, just to let you know all right so for those lesson right for the p6 um for the p6 uh mock paper one uh, mock paper one the answers are down here don't worry there's a recorded lesson down here. All right, so you can scroll all the way inside your lesson plan and go all the way to here. Can you see? I put it in for you already for the P6. All right, so this is the PSLE mathematics for mock one. So paper one and paper two is inside. Can? So that's where you can find the uh, recordings if you want. Okay? Uh, teacher, I can't find the mock paper. Uh, please just uh, look around. Oh, sure can find one. Sure can find one. All right, as I say just now already, all right, if you are listening, click on the dashboard. If you are P6, go to your P6 account here. Click on the topic map. Click on the mock papers. Down here, PSLE mock one paper one, can. All right, then you click on the start button. Then the paper two will be PSLE mock one paper two. Click on the start button. All right, the system will do the automatic marking for you also when you key in the answer. Can let me share screen? No, sorry, cannot let you share screen. All right, uh, Asha, uh, Asha, if you got anything, just message me later, Can, Yeah, just message me later. I, want, I need to continue my lesson. So you message me later, I'll guide you through again, Can. Okay? All right. So the, 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 to this lesson, we will be going through the uh, Premier 5 uh, Mock 1, Paper 1. Can. All right, so moving forward, these are the things that you need. Okay, uh, for calculator, it's only for paper two. So for paper one, we are not going to use our calculator. Okay, so remember the first question I showed you just now? This question? Yeah. Okay, let's go through. So what's the value of the digit nine in 892,356? Very simple, very straightforward. Let's check this out. This is in your ones place, right? This is in your ones place. This one is in your tens place. This one will be in your hundreds place. 
this one will be in your thousands place. All right. So when they talk about place, 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 your S must be included. Uh. And this one, the nine will be in your ten thousands place. Is that okay? So what's the value? Miss, what's the value? How much is it? All right. So it's actually, you can read it as 892,000, right? You read it to yourself. 892,000. So the nine represents the 90,000. Once you read to yourself, you can actually know the value. Is that true? Yeah. Uh, is it the same for all subjects? Uh, for English and science, yes. All right. You can go to the dashboard, the uh, topic map under the mock papers. Yes, it's the same. Okay. All right. So this is for question one. Easy question like this, a one mark question, you have to secure it. Okay. Okay. Question two. How many eights are there? How many eights? What's the meaning of eights? The meaning of eights means what? How many one over eight are there? Okay, how many one over eight are there in three and one quarter? So the first step I will do is to make three and one quarter to have a denominator of eight. Can? So down here, before that, right, let me change the mixed number to an improper fraction first. How? Four times three plus one. Four times three is 12. 12 plus one is a 13 over four. All right, some of you will just say, ah, answer is 13. Be careful. That's not what the question is asking for. Question is not looking for a quarter. Question is looking for eight. So your denominator, you need to make it to an eight times two times two. Equivalent fraction, you can adjust up and down, no, no problem. Four times two will give you an eight. 13 times two will give you a 26. So there are 26, one over eight. Can you see? All right, so there are 26, eight. Okay, and therefore your answer is 26. Is that understood? Okay, this is our question, very simple. Be flexible enough to change mixed number to improper and adjust the denominator, the numerator, all right? Something called equivalent fraction, you can go up and down, no problem. Question three, moving on. You're supposed to round off this number to the nearest hundreds, all right? Nearest hundreds. Where is the hundreds? So this portion here, this is called a what? There's no such thing as called a once, uh, don't have. This is called a tenth. Okay, how about this eight? This eight is called a hundred. All right, and this one is called a thousand. Correct? Ah, so anything on the right hand side is anything on the right hand side of the decimal point is all the th, 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 th. Okay, so the question says they want to make 89.584 to the nearest hundreds means that you want to keep this. You want to keep this because that's the hundreds. To determine whether the eight to round up or to maintain, you have to look at the next digit here. It's a four. So four is below five. So what happens? You maintain. You maintain as 58. Down here, you just copy the decimal point down here and this will be your answer. 89.58. Okay, your answer will be 89.58. Okay, rounding off all this simple question, question one to five, question one to, yeah, it's all the one mark question. Cool. Okay, moving on, question number four. Oh, which of the following fraction is closest to half, one over two? So in this case, you can actually make the denominator the same, all right, to compare. Or actually, right, can you see that the numerator is the same for this case? All the numerator is five, 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 five. Can you see that? So I purposely right, adjust my half, right? I change my numerator to a five. Also can, all right? Be flexible. Nobody say every time have to make the denominator the same. So now you purposely make the numerator the same. Why? Because down here, everybody, the numerator is a five. So one times five is a five. Two times five is a 10. Okay. So who is closest to five over 10? Can you see? If you compare 5 over 10, who is closest to 5 over 10 here? Okay. You look at the number 10. Look at the number 10. All right. 6 to 10 is a what? It's a difference of 4. There's a gap of 4. 7 to 10, there's a difference. There's a gap of 3. 9 to 10, there's a difference of 1. Ah, gap of 1, like very close. 12 to 10, there's a gap of 2. Can you see not? So in this case, the nearest, all right? is this. 5 over 9 is your answer. All right, you're looking for the one closest to half. 
half can be written as 5 over 10. So in this case, you make the numerator the same, also can, and you look at the numbers below, which one is the closest, that's the answer. Your answer for this is 5 over 9. Is that okay? All right, because every time we are trained right in school, we are trained to always make the denominator the same. All right, but be flexible, you can also adjust the numerator part. Uh, some student is asking me to uh, repeat these questions, that question. Hey, I'm so sorry, I cannot uh, keep repeating because uh, I, un I understand that every one of you, you are at different standard. Some of you are very good. Some of you uh, need a little bit more time to understand the question and all this. All right, that's the reason why this lesson is being recorded. All right, so I need you to understand. All right, so what happens here if, if you have a question that you do not understand? All right, can you please wait for two days? Let us upload this recording into the system. And you can go into your system, your lesson plan, and go and review this lesson again. You don't have to watch from the first question to the last question. You can drag the cursor to the particular question and just listen to that question again. Can you see that? Understand? All right, so that's the benefit of all these uh, recordings. You can watch it a couple of times until you fully understand. Cool? All right. So I'm going to move on. Question five. The capacity of a container is 10050. All right. It's read as 10,050 ml. You're supposed to express the capacity in liters. Okay. So you must know the conversion first. One liter is equal to what? One liter is equal to 1,000 milliliter. That's the conversion. Very, very important. So liters to ml you have to multiply by 1,000. ML to liters, you simply divide by 1,000. That is the what? That is the beauty of mathematics. All right, there's always the forward and backwards. If you go forward, it's a multiply by 1,000. You go backwards from ML to liters, it's a divide by 1,000. So now you are given a ML. You are given a ML, you want to find liters. What must you do? You have to divide by 1,000. So the number here is 10,050. You are supposed to divide by 1,000. And, and you have learned this in P5. I actually taught this in P4. Divide means what? To the left, to the left. Three zeros actually means three movement of the decimal point. Where is the decimal point for the 10,050? If the question never write, right, the decimal point is always located at the back. If the question never write. So by default, it's always at the back. So you are supposed to move to the left three steps. One step, two step, three step. And your answer will be 10.05 liters. All right. And that will be your first answer. Is that okay? Your answer will be 10.05 liters. So that's how you convert. Division is to the left. Multiplication is to the right. Very, very useful. Uh, 50 ml is 0 0.5 liters. Is that true? Let's check this out. One student asked me, what is 50 ml? All right. So you want to change ml to a liters. What do you do? All right. ml to liters, you must divide by 1,000. So 50 divided by 1,000. What do you do? As I say, as I say, divide means to the left, to the left. Three zeros means three movement. Where is the decimal point? Where is the decimal point of the 50? Never write means at the back. So you're supposed to move to your left by three movement. One step, two movement, three movement. So the decimal point must appear here. Erase this away. Hey, do you see this empty slot here? Put a zero here. All right, so the answer is actually what? The answer is actually 0 0.05. 0 0.05. Hey, but very ugly. We don't put it as 0 0.05. We put it as 0. 0 0.05 liters. All right, so that is another example of the conversion. Okay. All right, so moving on, moving on. Question six. All right, this question is talking about what? It's about angles. All right, by now the P5, I think your school might be teaching a little bit of angles. That is good. All right, so your school might have taught you something called this two, if they are considered straight line. This angle here, is actually equal to this angle here. What is this thing called? All right, this is actually called vertically opposite angles. All right, this is called vertically opposite angles, which also means that this angle here is equal to this angle here. All right, remember the two green lines, right? Must be straight line. 